With the Africa Cup of Nations set to return in all its glory, let's take a trip down memory lane and talk about some of the most exciting games in the competition's history. We go back to 1986, at a time when Sir Alex Ferguson was holding the poison chalice known as Manchester United. In the same year, Egypt hosted the 15th edition of the AFCON. The final featured the hosts against Cameroon in front of 120,000 fans. Believe it or not, there was actually a dress code for the final, and everyone watching was supposed to wear a suit and tie. The game finished 0-0 and Egypt won on penalties, but they say that the atmosphere was as electric as it can be. This sort of atmosphere has never been replicated before, and we highly recommend you watch the game's highlights to understand what we're trying to say. 33 years later, the competition provided us with another memorable game. This time around, it was a quarter-final game between Tunisia and Madagascar. Fans of both sides were as passionate as you can imagine. Madagascar were the underdogs, and no one expected them to even qualify for the tournament, let alone reach a quarter-final. The Minnows had already overcome Nigeria and Congo on their way to the last eight. The game itself was a back-and-forth affair. The Tunisians dominated, but Madagascar continued to annoy their more illustrious opponents. Eventually, they ended up losing the game 3 nil, but received a rousing reception because their performance in that game was worthy of praise, and a lot more, even though on paper it seemed like a one-sided scoreline. In 1972, Congo took on Mali in the competition's final. That final is still considered one of the best finals in the competition's history. Congo were famous for being a more direct attacking team, while Mali preferred to play a brand of football that would make Cruyff proud. The final score was 3-2, but that game kept everyone on the edge of their seats. African football is quite infamous when it comes to putting in overage players, so AFCON was always going to experience a bit of controversy. Cameroon handed a teenage player his debut. The player, Wilfried Douala, was a 17-year-old. But if you look at him with all his facial hair and a receding hairline that would look good on your dad, there's no way in hell he was a teenager. Maybe 17 was the jersey number and not his age? Who knows? In the mid-90s, Nigeria was dealing with the sort of political turbulence that would make a dictator blush. The Super Eagles were supposed to be the favorites to retain their AFCON crown in 1996, but due to political issues, decided not to go to South Africa. This gave the hosts an opportunity as a lifetime, as the Bafana Bafana ended up going all the way. This was a rather easy win for South Africa, because they were never truly tested throughout the tournament. For choosing not to participate, Nigeria were banned from the 1998 competition. However, they did return in 2000, where they faced South Africa in the semi-final, which they won quite comfortably. The final of the 2012 AFCOT was played between Zambia and Ivory Coast, and boy, that was one hell of a game. There was also somewhat poetic justice in a sense, because back in 1993, the Zambian team that was oozing with class and promise perished in a plane crash. Due to this, there was this weight of expectation, and the new-look Zambian side did not crumble. The Copper Bullets, or the Chipola Bolo as they're known, went on to win the final via a penalty shootout, and to be honest, no one deserved the triumph more. The 2015 final between Ivory Coast and Ghana was a high-octane encounter, and attackers from both sides were hell-bent on providing us a spectacle. By the end of the 90 minutes, it was goalless, and once the penalties arrived, we feared that Ivory Coast would once again choke when it matters the most. However, the gods of football were very attentive, and the Ivorians managed to keep their composure this time around and ended up humbling their fierce rivals. In every major competition, final group stage games tend to be littered with permutations. About 40 years ago at the 1984 AFCON, Algeria and Nigeria played out a dull draw, which ensured that both teams reached the semi-finals. It happens, right? Wrong. In 2012, Algerian midfielder Mohamed Shawin revealed that his team made a deal with the Nigerian team to play for a draw that would guarantee Ghana's elimination. That's just wrong on so many levels. The 2013 semi-final against Burkina Faso 
was supposed to be a cakewalk for Ghana. However, the Black Stars got quite a dose of some reality. The Minnows were up against it. They had a goal disallowed. Two stone wall penalties were denied. And Jonathan Petropia, their star player, was given his marching orders, which was also a wrong call. However, they somehow managed to take the game to the penalties, which they won against all odds. The 2022 final between Egypt and Senegal was billed as the game between former Liverpool teammates Mohamed Salah and Sadio Mane. But the rivalry went further beyond these two because there were some crunching tackles and excellent saves. After a goalless 90-minute affair and extra time, the game went into penalties. Ironically, Sadio Mane missed from the spot, but that didn't matter because the Egyptians were woeful converters, which allowed Senegal to become the kings of Africa. So guys, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And before you leave, make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons, turn on your notifications and watch this next video. Till next time.